good things, Delmarva. We are back and we are talking wellness. And I may have started a little backwards this morning as many believe spiritual wellness can lead to wellness in all the other areas of our lives. I'm joined now by Bishop Jesse Abbott. He's the pastor of New Dimensions Ministries and he's also my pastor and I'm delighted to have him here with us this morning to talk about spiritual wellness. Good morning, Bishop Abbott. Good morning. Good morning. So we've talked physical wellness, we've talked mental wellness, but I think a big one is spiritual wellness. I mean, do you as a pastor find that top of the year people are looking for something new? Well, most of the time what um, I see is similar to all the other things there. Um, they've maybe failed in the past year, setting goals and all those things. And uh, so they come back to church, mm -hmm. um, set spiritual goals. I'm going to read through the Bible all <laughs> this year. I'm going to attend church more than just on Christmas, just mm -hmm. more than just on Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. And um, But most of the time, uh, what I find myself doing is talking to people in regards to dealing with, you know, trauma that has taken place near the holidays and uh, people who basically have had maybe broken relationships and um, how to piece their lives back together. Are people, do you find people are more broken this time of year as we, you know, kind of that whole end the old, out with the old, in with the new? Or is the, is the level of brokenness just that you see as a, a pastor and a spiritual leader kind of the same all the time? Because by the time people are ready to talk to you, it's such a devastating place. How do, how do you rate it, really? Well, what I'm seeing uh, more is people that are holding things in, uh, not talking about things, and so therefore they wait until it, it really gets crucial. And um, I'm finding out that um, uh, there are people who really are dealing with so much more brokenness at near the holidays, especially during Christmas time. I don't know what's actually going on, but I do know that um, in, in the 40 years that I've been doing ministry, it seems like it has been inc it has increased this year, especially. Hmm. A lot of people who have gone through a lot of trauma, loss of loved ones, uh, accidents, and things of that nature. So, what do you what do you say to people? I I mean, how do you tell someone who comes in with all the things people tell you. My mom died, my dad died, my marriage is on the rocks, my kids aren't doing right. right. I, and I know you mm -hmm. hear all of it. Mm -hmm. What do you say to people to reassure them or to let them know there's something better? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I try to find out exactly where they are spiritually okay. and then um, go from there, see if they are um, connected with a church, um, a church home, has have a pastor that they can talk to. Because most of the time they need someone to listen to them. Yeah. They need to be in a support group, a uh, small group that they can be in to be able to share their, you know, the hurts and their pains with people who have already gone through it. And most of the time that's what I try to do is to get them connected because I don't have the answers. The Lord has the answers and so I do point them to Christ. But mostly hearing the story from others of how God has brought them out helps them to get through their trauma and their situations. Do you find that most people are already in a relationship with God, with Christ, or do you find that you really do get people who are searching for the answer, if mm -hmm. you will? There are many who are still searching for the answer. I've, I have never uh, seen a, ti a time as these where uh, we're seeing people who are not attending church um, on a regular basis. There are people who are mostly looking at television, televangelists, mm. and things of this nature. That's increasing more and more. And so they don't have, in a sense, a personal relationship and then a relationship with people that they interact with on a regular basis, like by going to church and connecting with those people. So um, that is trying to get them into the right group or get them connected with the right people to be able to talk and to discuss and to be able to share what it is that they're facing. Now, as a, a minister, do you, do you think there's a correlation between our level of attachment and connectedness with the church and these support groups and with being involved <laughs> as far as our brokenness? Are, are they parallel? Do you see that if you're connected, you're doing a little bit better? Or do we still find, do you still find that even those who are 
connected, we, we still have a need on some level. Now, I think that everyone has a need on some level. It's just that I think that those who are connected to Christ and really have a relationship with Him are able to handle it better. I think that they are, they're able to really adjust to the situation a lot better uh, mm -hmm. as long as they're, uh, we don't call our, um, share, uh, we don't call the things that we do in regards to helping people to get through these uh, through this process as counseling. We call it spiritual advisement. So we advise them, we give them direction, we uh, sh share with them what we feel is needed and necessary in their lives. So. Okay, we are talking wellness. We're going to come back and talk more with Bishop Abbott. We've talked physical wellness, we've talked mental wellness, and we're now talking spiritual wellness. And I, like I've said, he's pastor at New Dimensions Ministries and he's my pastor. And we'll talk more just about some practical things you can do to, um, to let this be your breakout year spiritually as well. So stick around. More Good Things Don't Marva after the break.